Hi there my fellow gamers. Last year the all new Flow X16 was one of my favorite laptops to review. With its convertible form factor, solid performance and of course one of the very first mini LED panels we tested, I named it the perfect compromise. This one is the 2023 update and while it comes with the same chassis, it is now powered by an Intel brain, has to make do with a standard IPS panel and comes with one of the first RTX 4060s we have been able to get our hands on. If the compromise took over or if the ROG Flow X16 is still the perfect in-between laptop for gamers, creators and power users, we will tell you in our review. Our review sample comes with the Raptor Lake i9 13900H, Nvidia's middle of the road RTX 4060 running with up to 140 watts, a mere 16GB of memory and a 1TB SSD. Here in Germany this config sets you back 2600 euros, which is quite steep to be honest, and while I wasn't able to find dollar pricing for this model, the RTX 4070 variant was available for $2700 at the time of filming. I will put links with updated prices in the caption below, so feel free to check them out. As I mentioned already regarding chassis design, there is nothing new happening. And the X16 still comes with this very subtle blend of subdued black performer with that little bit of RG sprinkling on top. This laptop is exceptionally well made with no flexing anywhere and I would even say they improved the hinge quite a bit, since it feels a lot smoother and much more stable to adjust the big convertible. In regards to ports, you can find your HDMI 2.1, USB-C Thunderbolt 4 and the audio combo port on the left and two USB-A 3.2 Gen 2s and a micro SD card reader on the right. The Flow X16 is equipped with the XG mobile connector as well, so you can hook up an external 4090 to this one if you so desired and got the cash to spare of course. We tested it already with the Z13 a while back and since this one came with the same CPU, the performance should be very similar, so be sure to check out that video as well. The connector also houses an additional USB-C 3.2 Gen 2 and like its Thunderbolt enabled neighbor, it supports power delivery as well as DisplayPort signals. To stay in contact with the world around you, the Flow delivers good wireless transfers and a 1080p Windows Hello enabled camera that may not offer the cleanest image but relatively natural colors. For maintenance, repairs or upgrades, you got access to the usual pair of SODIMS and NVMe slots. If you want to use the 16-inch Flow as your daily driver, you will be happy to hear that the keyboard offers a pretty snappy feel with a decent amount of travel and a clear pressure point. Once more, the trackpad offers no reason to complain and does what a laptop trackpad is supposed to do. As additional inputs, you can interact with your on-screen content via the touchscreen or use an active pen for taking notes or working in creative applications. Alright my friends, let's talk display. Last year, the X16 blew me away with its 165Hz QHD Plus Mini LED panel. Unfortunately, this one has to make do with a regular IPS screen. The Nebula HDR branded panel is still available, but only with the RTX 4070 GPU option. It is most likely the same panel we have already tested in the Surface Duo, so I will put this video down below or somewhere up here. Apart from the mini LED backlight, this panel is still fantastic and while I do sorely miss the HDR capabilities and added brightness, it comes with excellent specs across the board. Color gamut coverage and color reproduction are very good from the factory and manual calibration can take things even further. As a huge advantage, the IPS screen comes without PWM and in addition, every gamer will be very happy with snappy response times and a fast refresh rate. To make sure that there is even the possibility to get close to the 240Hz, the Flow X16 is equipped with the Raptor Lake i9 13900H and offers numbers that are in line with what we have seen from the mainstream performance silicon so far. While it can of course not quite keep up with the monstrous HX CPUs, it delivers a lot of raw computing muscles and while I know some of you guys are already preparing there, it would have been better with AMD comments, you might want to stay tuned until we talk about battery life. System performance in our PCMark benchmark runs are impressive and the Flow X16 can keep up with much faster and even more expensive machines. That said, drive performance is only average for a PCI Gen 4 drive, but if you will notice it outside of benchmark scenarios, very much depends on your use case. Alright gamers, let us talk about the RTX 4060. With up to 140 watts, you should actually be able to get quite a bit of performance out of the relatively sleek chassis. 
and the lower mid-range ADA mobile card definitely delivers in terms of performance. If it's enough for the price tag, that is another question entirely. But in our combined performance rating, it's on par with last year's 3070 Ti and AMD's fastest mobile chip breakdown T7600S. It also gets pretty close to the 100 watts RTX 4070 in the Aero 16, that actually offers a similar form factor as the Flow, but can of course not keep up with higher wattage variants of its bigger product. Should you want to use your Flow for work, the 4060 delivers adequately in Blender and scales nicely in our video export tests against its Ada mobile siblings. The added 2 gigs of video memory, putting it on par with the 4070, should give you quite a boost in some heavier creative applications. And so the X16 can actually impress in the Puget Premiere Pro benchmark while it does fall behind in Photoshop. The Flow is of course an ROG branded notebook, so let's talk about gaming. In our combined performance rating, testing older games at 1080p, we get numbers in line with our synthetic tests. But this time around, the 4060 can clearly beat the AMD competition, and the lead of the 4070 is reduced quite a bit. This raises the question if it even makes sense to upgrade to the bigger ADA option, unless you really want that mini LED display, which I could totally understand. But from a performance point of view, you might be equally happy with the 4060, since you will get a much better performance per dollar deal. We tested a bunch of games at different settings and resolutions for you, so you can get an idea of what to expect from this one. While the native 240Hz will be a tough goal to reach, 100 to 150 FPS in 1080p and high settings should be a good fit for faster games, and 1080 at ultra settings will still net you solid frame rates in all games we tested. In QHD, the air is getting a bit thinner for this smaller Ada Silicon, and especially in very demanding titles, you might have a hard time getting above the 60fps threshold. To see what DLSS and FrameGen can do for you in this regard, I tested Hogwarts Legacy and Cyberpunk in their highest possible setting levels. And while things have been choppy rendered natively, using Team Green's upscaling tech almost doubled frame rates in Hogwarts, and I think the Cyberpunk results speak for themselves. To give you guys a rough idea of fan noise and temperatures under various loads and in different performance profiles, please enjoy the following noise samples. We will have detailed measurements as soon as our written review is finished, and I will link it down below. Circling back to Intel vs AMD, given that even Zen 4, as seen in our Sephiroth G14 review, cannot work any magic in terms of battery life, we might have to re-evaluate the common consensus that Team Red in general offers better runtimes. This year's flow is the perfect example and with almost 8 hours during our Wi-Fi standard test, it might not be able to keep up with the tough A16, but it can clearly beat last year's offerings. Alright guys, it's already about time to wrap it up for today. So does the ROG Flow X16 still offer the almost perfect compromise? Maybe it's not perfect, but I would consider it a very well-rounded and very well-tuned system. It offers a high-quality chassis with decent port selection, above-average CPU performance and solid gaming and content creation grunt, making it a great machine for everyone who is looking for a great laptop that can do everything all at once without having to spend 3000 bucks or more to get it. Of course, it is still not exactly a budget option, and the mini LED is sorely missed. But overall, there's actually not really anything to complain about this one. But please let me know what you think in the comments below. This would be it for today. Please do not forget to like this video on your way out. And a little YouTube birdie also told us a lot of you guys have not subscribed yet. Thanks a ton for watching nonetheless. My name is Alex, you have been absolutely fantastic and I cannot wait to see you all in the next one. Take care.